to all of you. Uh, we are so glad that you have come here to First United Methodist Church to worship today. As we gather together, uh, we want to celebrate the fact that God has brought us here. At the end of each of your pews, you will find a black pad. And in that pad, there are some cards. And on those cards, you can let us know that you and whoever you came to worship with today are here with us. If you are a guest or a visitor, we would especially love the chance to say hello to you. Uh, and so uh, we invite you to leave whatever contact information you're comfortable with, uh, an email or a phone number, so we can reach out and say hi to you this week. And for everyone, as you pass those uh, pads around this morning, look around, see who maybe you haven't seen in a while or maybe you've never seen before, and make sure you say hi to them uh, before the end of the service. Well, today is not all that we have going on in our life together as a church. Uh, let me tell you about a few of the other things that we have coming up. One of those is our Advent Family Night tonight, so if you signed up for that, uh, don't forget to come on uh, out to that. And you see uh, there, you can call Miss Carla, you see the phone number there in your bulletin if you'd like to come but haven't uh, signed up yet, or haven't registered yet, um, so we can be ready for you. We also have a, a series of new member classes that are going on. We had one today at 10 o'clock, so you've missed that one. But you can jump in on the third Sunday in December, uh, and then we'll have, we're going to keep that, class, that cycle going. It's a cycle of three classes, normally on the fourth Sunday uh, of each month. Um, we just shifted it for Christmas in December. And we're going to keep those going, so be, come on and jump on into those at any uh, point. We also have a new young adult Sunday school class that's starting up next week. Uh, in room 207. Who we have in mind for that is sort of our, our 20s and maybe early 30s uh, kind of age group. There's no sort of hard and fast age limits on that. We've got a good crew there to kind of seed that class. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of it, let me know. I'll get you in touch with, with them, or you can just show up in room 207 next week. Y'all help us spread the word on that, too. You may know somebody who doesn't yet know about that class, but would be a perfect fit for it, um, and uh, let us know about that, or let us know about them so we can plug uh, them in. Well, that's a little of what's going on in our life together as a church. Uh, you can see even more uh, here in your uh, worship bulletin, uh, additionally on uh, the church Facebook uh, page. You follow us there, and also make sure you're checking out the church uh, website, fumctupelo.com. If you don't get our newsletter, you can sign up for the newsletter right there on the website so you get all this and more delivered to you each week. Well, that's a little of what we have going on. Let's now turn our hearts and our minds uh, to worship.
O Emmanuel, our King and Lawgiver, the expected of the nations and their Savior, come, come and save, save us, O Lord, Lord our God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may celebrate aright the commemoration of the Nativity and may await with joy the coming in glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. 
He shall judge between the nations. He shall arbitrate for many peoples. He shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the immortal through him who lives and free reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, and now, now and forever. Amen. God of our people, Lord of every nation, let your word ring out from the mountains and your spirit shine forth in the earth, so that all may hear your teaching and all may do your good will, through Jesus Christ our hope. Amen. Our psalm today is 122, which we will say together um, using the form on page 145 in your hymnal. They said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet were standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city and is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel. Thrones for judgment were set there, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good.
gospel lesson comes to us this day from Matthew's gospel, the 24th chapter. Hear now the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then there will be in the field. Two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. One will be grinding meal together and one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It seems as if we could simply close our eyes and we could hear Andy Williams singing those very familiar words, that is, for those of us over 50. <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. When the kids, with the kids, jingle belling, and everyone telling you to be of good cheer, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And it is wonderful. It is wonderful today to come in to our worship space. So many things are different this morning. Do you see them? The paraments are changed. The clergy vestments are different. The whole worship setting seems to have been transformed. It is as if we are starting over again, starting the new year. On this first Sunday of Advent, this first Sunday of the liturgical year, it is the most wonderful time of the year. It is a time of unexpected hopefulness. One of the things that I missed so much in my life uh, as a district superintendent, uh, I missed celebratory days in the life of the church. I missed Advent and Christmas services. I missed the Lenten season and Easter. For you realize that most churches didn't want the DS to come on those days. Uh, and so it is my joy. It is my honor and privilege. My heart is strangely warmed to be back in the local church on this day that we celebrate as the first Sunday of Advent. This is Advent. It's a season of hope, 
a season of anticipation, a season of watching and waiting, of active waiting. Waiting for Christmas? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Our discipleship ministry writers put it this way. They said, no, it is not a season that is designed to be a countdown to the celebration of Christmas. It is a time of preparation, a time of preparing for Christ's return and the establishment of the kingdom of God. It is a reminder that we are headed someplace, that we are a work in progress, that we are longing for something more than what we have today. That's the upward call of Advent. We sing an Advent song of ascent as we climb up to worship in a new reality, that new way of being in the world where we are longing, we are looking forward, and we are expecting. But yes, at the same time, we are, we are looking back some as well. We are anticipating the incarnation the time when God broke into our history and became present in an astonishing way. And this morning as we sing Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God is with us, we yearn to know in our individual hearts and spirits that God truly is with us. Our lectionary text, the the Isaiah that, that Jesse shared, the psalm that uh, Smith shared, and the gospel that I brought out among you are all texts that are pulling us, pulling us today toward the light. For we hear within these lessons a call to be people who live in the light instead of the darkness. We hear them saying to us, that there is hope for a day when we will truly find peace. And we hear them reminding us to be ready for when that day will come. For who knows? Who knows the hour, our gospel writer said. I could not help myself this morning. Uh, I came to the church a little early. And uh, I'll go ahead and tell you this. She'll talk to me about it when we get home. But uh, <laughs> someone here was still asleep when I left this morning. And, and I just reached over and said, I'm going to the church. And she said, my Lord, what time is it? <laughs> oh, it's about six. And so, but there was a yearning. There was a pull in my spirit to come and to be here for for this past week, I, I received a call over in the office, and I think it said, Preacher, you need to come to the sanctuary. So I made my way over, and, and there were people on ladders, people who should not have been on ladders. <laughs> but they were there, and they were putting up a tree, and they were putting up the wreaths, and, and the wreaths, and the, the sanctuary was transforming. So I yearned, I longed this morning to be able to come and to sit where you sit, to turn on the light of the chrismon tree, and to experience God's presence among us. I know that you're all kind of focused in on me, but I'm going to ask you to shift over there for a moment. I'm going to ask you just to take the time to look at the tree, to notice that those are not just uh, pieces of styrofoam and beads and pipe cleaners and gold thread. Those things come together to, to form symbols, symbols of our faith, symbols that have meaning, symbols that remind us that when our early Christian brothers and sisters uh, were at a place where they could not publicly <laughs> express their faith, they used these symbols 
as a means to connect with each other, to identify themselves to each other. I particularly invite you to notice uh, the fish, kind of about halfway down the fish that, that has the letters of the Greek uh, that, that mean Jesus, God, Son, Savior. to ask yourself, do I reflect Jesus in my life, in who I am? It would have been very easy for those early Christians to focus on the doom and gloom and the persecution that was all around them, and it would be easy for us today as well to focus on all that we hear that is wrong. And y'all can look back this way. All that is, uh, it helps me if you do. Uh, and it would be so easy for us to focus on, on uh, what is wrong with the world. Sometimes even what's wrong with the church. What's wrong with my Sunday school class. Oh, if they would have done it this way or that way. But that's not who we are, First United Methodist Church in Tupelo, Mississippi. We are not people of the darkness. We are people of the light. We are people of the light who hear the call of Advent, and that call is not to proclaim doom, but it is to spread hope. It is to see possibilities and what God may do among us, even when no one else can see it, we can see it. And so I'm going to ask you, can you see it? Yes. Let's try that one more time. Can you see it? Yes. We can see the light of Jesus Christ among us. See it in this beautiful worship space. We see it in those that we sit beside in the pew. We see it in the voices that we hear and the music and the word and we know that Emmanuel, God is with us. I read this past week that our brother, our father, John Wesley, was once asked what would he do if he knew that this was his very last day on the earth. And I quote his words. At four o'clock, I would have some tea, he said. And at six o'clock, I would visit Mrs. Brown in the hospital. And then at 7.30, I would conduct a midweek worship service. And at 10 o'clock, I would go to bed, and I would wake up in glory. Amen, Father Wesley. My friends, we are called to be about the work of ushering hope during this beautiful season of Advent. And I believe that Jesus Christ expects each of us to be about this work so that, as the Gospel writer says, when he comes again, so that when he comes and we know not when, he will find us gainful, and constructive in our employment, taking care of the world to which he has made all of us trustees. This is your opportunity to be on the board of trustees. <laughs> Christ trustees. In closing this morning, I want to leave you with a few questions that may help you to focus on the unexpected hopefulness of Advent. Who, what, when, where, and how? Y'all remember those? Ask yourself, who do I need to spend more time with during this Advent season? Prayerfully ask yourself, who is that person? Or maybe person you think it's important for you to give the gift of time. 
What can I do to spread light instead of darkness at my workplace, at my school, and in my family? What has to change in me so that I do not reflect darkness, but I reflect the light of Christ? And when? When can I set aside time each day during these holy days of Advent for a very, very personal conversation with my Savior, Jesus Christ? Now notice I said conversation. That means I talk a while, and then I'm quiet, and then God talks a while invite you to practice that. Praying and then being silent and quiet and allowing God to speak to you. Where? Where can I use what God has created in me? My personal giftedness, my talents, how can I use those to help someone else see the love of God and experience this amazing life as a spirit-filled Christian? And lastly, the how. How can I be a messenger of hope to someone that is living in darkness? Think about that, my friend. If we invest enough time thinking, we know someone who is living not in the light, but in darkness. How can we be that person that God might use to usher in the light? After the turkey, the dressing, after all was consumed, or at least as much as we could, I ventured out this past Friday with my, my oldest son, Highland, and his wife, Mary Page, and of course, John Henry was there, our new grandson, just in case I've not told you about him. <laughs> we journeyed out and made our way downtown to do a little early Christmas shopping and things were already beginning to happen. There were shoppers in and out of stores. There was music in the air. There was the smell of Christmas, and I could not help but remember those words, oh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. May this season of Advent be a time of joy, a time of hope, and a time of finding peace in our shared life together. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> if you would stand and join me in the affirmation of faith, we're using the Nicene Creed today. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is our joy now to invite uh, two persons, uh, Tracy and Tony Bastone, to come uh, as they will be transferring their membership into our church family. Please turn with me to reception of new members in our hymnals on page 38. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is my joy to introduce you to these uh, new friends, just in case you have not met them. This is Tony and Tracy Bastone. They come to us this morning. Tony comes transferring his membership from the Catholic Church. Tracy comes transferring uh, here from the Presbyterian Church. Those are triple stamps, friends. <laughs> and so we are so thankful to have them. And Fawn and Smith are, are joined here with us, and they will lead you in your responses. But before we do that, Tony and Tracy, I ask you the historical questions of the church. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you now be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries. We will. And now, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your mission? We will. Thank you. Members of the household of God, I commend Tracy and Tony to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give, give thanks, thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Tony and Tracy, may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may continue to live in grace and in peace. Amen. Be welcome. Be welcome. And following our service this morning after the uh, last hymn, we'll ask them to come back and you'll have an opportunity to come and to welcome them. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Let's pray together. Oh God, we pray to you, not knowing what today or tomorrow will bring. We may be up to the things of our everyday lives, we may be in the field, or we may be in the midst of preparing a meal. We may be in the midst of the everyday callings that you've given us in offices and in workplaces and in our family lives. We pray, O oh Lord, that in the midst of that everyday experience, we would encounter you anew. We pray that you would make us ready with the promise that you have shown us in Jesus promise that you have already given us through his death and his resurrection, and the promise that you have for us, the hope that you have for us, and his coming again to make all things new, to turn sword into plowshare, and to turn spear into pruning hook. Oh God, as we await that day, we pray that you would make us into symbols of your hope, symbols of your love for the world. We pray that your light would shine not only on us, but through us into the places in our community, in this place, in the places of our lives where we need uh, to know, to experience afresh the life that you have offered to us. Oh God, we pray that in this Advent season that you would increase our faith, confirm our hope, and perfect us all in your love together. We pray in this season of waiting, the season of anticipation, that you would discipline us in such a way that we are drawn more closely to you and that we would bear your image into the world. And God, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as forgiven and reconciled people of God, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to our God.
We give you thanks and praise, O oh God, that you have built us up in faith and bound us together in love. By your grace, may all that we do show the glory of your name and serve the good of your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, in this season of Advent, God has called us together to be the church. If you are seeking God today, if God has found you today, then we invite you to come forward to pray as we sing our hymn of commitment. the day and hour no one knows. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Be ready, for the Lord will come at an unexpected hour. And may the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the Spirit's joy surround you as you go and as you walk in the light of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 